So you might be in a situation where the water is off to your home for some reason and you need to flush something down the toilet. You really don't want it hanging out. Now you might not be as lucky as me and you have Fruit Loops in your toilet. Yours might be a little less appealing, but either way, we'll get you back up and running, get it flushed out and get clean water in your toilet, even if the water is off. Now, first things first, don't forget, even when the water's off, you should have a full tank of water that will give you one flush and then it's done because you're not gonna be able to fill that tank back up. So check your tank. If it does have any water in it, go ahead and press on the handle and get that one flush and you're done. Now, if you do not have any water in your tank, that is where, don't worry, it's still pretty easy, but you are gonna have to do something a little different. What you need to do is go get a bucket or a pitcher or something to hold about a gallon and a half of water. Now each toilet's a little different. You can usually find that on the back of your toilet here and it'll tell you how many gallons per flush or if you take the cover off your tank, you'll actually see it printed on the inside of the tank of how many gallons per flush or how many liters per flush do you need and then I'll give you an idea how much water do you want. I usually go a little bit more than that. So for this instance, this toilet uses 1.28 or 1.3 gallons per flush. I'm gonna use about a gallon and a half. So let me show you how easy it is. So hopefully that got you out of what can be a little bit of an embarrassing situation, but if you got a little more time and you want a little more knowledge, stick with me, give me another minute, I'll show you why it works like this. So if we do a little whiteboard session here on the side of the toilet, you can easily see how the operation works. The blue cross section here indicates the standard amount of water after a flush that stays in the bowl and also the trap. What this does is it actually completely blocks off your trap or your connection to the drain where sewer gases could come back through and out into your home, which you do not want. So this blocks that off and makes sure those toxic gases don't come back into your home. But the water level stays in there because you cannot overcome gravity and the water's not going to go up over the trap here until you introduce the green cross section, which is that 1.28 gallons per flush, at least on this toilet. We introduce that water, that creates a downward pressure from what's called head pressure, and then that will push the water up and over your trap, creating a suction or a siphon effect that then will flush out all the water and anything else in the water and push that down into the drain. Now the siphon effect continues on until you hear the gurgling at the end of a flush, which is air being introduced here, that breaks that suction or siphon effect and stops the flushing cycle. Can you guys do me a favor and like, and also give me a comment on this video? Did you already know this information or did you learn something along the way? What that will do is help kind of push this video beyond my normal audience because I did a poll and about eight out of 10 of my normal audience already knew this, but a lot of homeowners don't know it. So we gotta kind of push this out beyond the normal viewers that we get on this channel. So I appreciate you guys, I appreciate your help. Now, if you guys want a couple of easy tips on how to unclog a bathroom sink drain or your kitchen sink drain, check out this video right here. I'll work you through it, which I know is a pretty common problem around my house. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.